Okay, hi. Now, in this video, we're going to speak about hard water. Now, this does not mean ice, okay? We're not talking about ice. We are talking about liquid water. So, it might sound a bit strange, the fact that we're referring, it, uh, referring to it as hard. Well, there is a reason, and it's actually got to do with how the water interacts with other substances. Now, most commonly, we're talking about soaps, and we're talking about um, other things like that. So also things like lime scale, which you will have heard of in washing machines uh, and scale in kettles, all of that is a result of hard water. Most of the time, and depending on where you are based in the UK, you have soft water. Now soft water will form a lava very easily with soap um, and it won't lead to lime scale anywhere near as quickly as hard water will. So first of all, I'm just going to say that hard water, okay, hard water makes it difficult to form a lava, so to form lava, and that's where it goes all bubbly when, you, uh, when you're using your soaps or your shower gels, etc. Difficult to form that lava with soap. Okay, now I'm sorry for this awful handwriting. There we go, lava, you can see that a bit better now. Now the reason this happens is that hard water, okay, hard water actually contains Ions, okay, so ions normally of metals, and those metal ions obviously aren't meant to be there, and when they are there, they interfere with what the water is interacting with. So the hard water contains ions, contains ions. Now I'm going to give you an example. An example of an ion it could contain would be calcium ions, okay, so e.g., calcium, okay. Now, they're not always ions, though. They could be compounds. So, ions or compounds. But those compounds are normally ionic, which means you are actually containing ions once they're dissolved. Okay. So, all compounds dissolved. And those compounds react with the soap. So, which react with soap to... There we go, with soap to form scum. Okay, so it's scum. Now that scum can float on the water and it can stick to things like your baths or in pipes and it's just a complete nuisance. Okay, so that's what hard water is, but how does it form? Okay, so formation of our hard water. Now, basically, most hard water contains either calcium ions or magnesium ions, okay? So, Ca or Mg ions. Now, they dissolve into the water when things like streams and rivers pass over rocks, because rocks can contain uh, metal ions such as calcium and magnesium. So, when rivers or streams... Rivers or streams... Okay, I've just written it all out. They pass over the rocks and they dissolve the ions or the compounds which are contained within the rocks. For example, so e.g. gypsum, okay, that's G-Y-P-S-U-M, that contains calcium sulfate, okay, which is C-A-S-O-4. We already know, well we should know already, that limestone contains calcium carbonate, okay, which is C-A-C-O-3. Now, calcium sulfate is soluble, and this will dissolve directly into water. So this will dissolve directly into water. Into water. However, calcium carbonate is pretty much insoluble. Okay, it's insoluble. However, it still does dissolve. And how this happens is actually quite clever. Well, when rain falls and it fills up the rivers or the streams, okay, or even water which is just exposed to air, well, the air contains carbon dioxide, okay, and the carbon dioxide can dissolve into water, and this forms hydrogen carbonate, okay, which is actually slightly acidic, okay. So, I'll just give you that equation, which actually isn't in your book. So, H2O plus CO2 gives you... This is known as carbonic acid, which contains hydrogen plus, which is your acid ion, plus hydrogen carbonate, which is your other ion. 
okay? So it's not really the hydrogen carbonate that's acidic, sorry. It's carbonic acid that's acidic, but that's what it formed. The fact that you have this guy here, well, this tells you that it's an acid. It's very weak acid, but it is acidic. Now, you're not given this equation in your book, and you don't need to know it, but I think it's actually helpful to know why that water plus CO2 is acidic. And so on that note, the equation you are given is that your calcium carbonate, okay, plus water, plus your CO2, which is dissolved in water, and now you can see up here why it's acidic, okay, gives you a calcium 2 plus, okay, plus 2 H. CO3 minus ions, okay? They're your hydrogen carbonate ions. So now you can see why I showed you um, this equation above. Now this here is the one that we're interested in, the calcium ions, because this causes hardness, okay? It causes the water to be hard. So because we've produced this Ca2 plus in the water, that creates hard water. This can then react uh, in the water to form scum when it reacts with soap and so on and so on. And this is not very helpful. We now know that hard water interacts badly with soap. But let's see how that actually happens. What is going on is that the ions, be they the calcium ions or the magnesium ions, which have formed the hard water, are actually um, reacting with the soap to form an insoluble salt, okay? And this insoluble salt is scum, and that is what is um, forming on the top of the water. It's only after this has been formed that the soap can do what we want it to do and form a lava, and then we can wash with it, okay? So what we have is our ions. Let's just use calcium as an example. So calcium ions, okay, two plus, plus um, our soap, which is actually sodium, you don't need to know the formula, you just need to know the name. Sodium stearate, that's S-T-A-R-A-T-E. Okay, this is the active ingredient in soap. Okay, so I'm going to put soap underneath. Now, they react together and they form, I'm going to do it down here so you can see all of it, calcium stearate. Okay, basically the calcium swaps places with the sodium. Calcium stearate. Okay, and that is a precipitate which means it is a solid because it is the scum, okay? That's what forms, and plus sodium ions. So the ions have basically switched place. It's almost like a displacement reaction that you've seen before, okay? But it doesn't really matter that sodium is more reactive, okay? This still occurs. So only once all of this has happened, okay, which is gonna waste our soap, we need to use more soap so that we can uh, cause this reaction to occur and then afterwards the soap can do what we want it to do and form a lava in the water Okay, because once the calcium ions have reacted there's no more calcium ions in the water and it's now uh, soft water as it were Okay, now finally the forming the scum from the soap is different to lime scale. Okay, so what about lime scale? Well lime scale actually forms not when it reacts with the soap, but it forms when some types of hard water so it's when hard water is heated, okay? Heated, we form our lime scale. Now this scale, okay, so the scale, we say lime scale, but there are other types of scale as well. So scale is insoluble, okay, insoluble. And so it will clog pipes, clog pipes, and it will just get everywhere and cause a nuisance. And if you've ever seen the heating elements in kettles, the scale will also cover uh, those parts of the kettles. Now, the scale is a poor conductor of heat. So the scale is a poor conductor of heat. Okay, which means that the heating element on the kettle, if it's covered in scale, it's going to take longer for it to heat up the water. And this means that our kettles are less efficient and require more energy. So it's actually quite a nuisance. So therefore, this happening is obviously a bad thing. We need to be constantly cleaning our kettles of lime, of lime scale and other scale. Um, and ideally, of course, we want to be using soft water so that these problems uh, don't happen. However, I'm going to finish by saying that there are actually, sorry about this, there are actually some positives. So positives when using hard water. 
Okay, well, the calcium ions, you've probably seen um, that calcium helps strengthen your bones and it also helps um, strengthen the enamel on your teeth. Okay, so drinking milk is good for your teeth um, and a lot of toothpaste, they might contain calcium. Well, the calcium ions in drinking water, okay, two plus in the water, which obviously is a component of hard water, well, they also help with development of bones and teeth. So it equals stronger bones and teeth. Bones. There we go, because it's still the same calcium ions. It doesn't matter that we're calling it hard water because it's in water. It's still calcium ions and you're still drinking them if you're going to be drinking hard water. Now, there is also some evidence, okay? You take this with a pinch of salt, but there's some evidence to say that hard water uh, actually uh, helps prevent or reduce heart disease. Okay, so there's some evidence to suggest hard water can reduce heart disease. Okay, so I hope that's helped. That's basically everything you need to know on hard water for now. Um, we are going to have a look in the next video at how we counteract this. But at the moment, uh, this is just giving you an overview of what hard water is and why it's a problem. If you do have any questions on that, please do feel free to leave a comment in the box below or send me a direct email using the link. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you have enjoyed it. Um, but I look forward to seeing you in the next one.